We're in, so we're in the chicken pen. Uh, it's a converted silo, as you can see, an old grain bin. And what we do here is we have our roosting boxes for some of our hens, but we also raise up our baby chicks in here. We have a pen, a small cage, which when they're very young, they go in there where they're kept safe from the other chickens and some of the roosters that can get a little bit crazy. And as they get older, we open the door and allow them to start integrating with the rest of the flock. We use actually the bedding, we use pine shavings for bedding, and we, uh, we're about to change it out, but I wanted to show it to you like this. This is what's gonna turn into compost now. And chicken manure bedding is some of the best compost that you can use on vegetables and food. <laughs> Charlie. So Charlie's got one of our chickens here. Charlie, uh, what kind of chicken is that? An Easter egg. An Easter egg. What makes an Easter egg or chicken unique? Um, well, instead of the chicken that looks like an Thank you, Charleston. Thank you. We feed them and some this, starter crumble. And this is a chicken egg that you see. It is we feed our chickens uh, an organic starter mix, uh, obviously non-medicated. We do um, open flock, obviously, open free-range chickens. Everybody gets, as soon as they're big enough, they just kind of free-range out into the field as we go. Let's go look at some ducks. Chicken egg. Chicken egg and a duck egg. So, these ducks, they have to have a dorm light over them. It's like when you get really, really cold, the ducks don't have the feathers in yet, so they have to stay under a light. The water, they have to drink a lot and lots of water because they, as you know, I already told you this, but they spend more time in the water than the chickens. So they have to drink lots of water, and sometimes they like to swim in it. And then we have our food. They we don't want to give them big duck food because it could get stuck in their beaks or anything, something that is big enough. So we have to use smaller foods. And they really, really like to play. The one here is a duckling, oh, and so these are peeking gut. Peking ducks, so when they go older, they're meat ducks, they don't lay eggs. So, in about like, I don't know, nine weeks? Ten, ten weeks. Ten, ten weeks they'll get butchered. Ten weeks. And they do lay eggs, but they won't get to the age to lay any eggs. Dad is cleaning the water so they can have water. I didn't know they drink pretty much all of it in about five minutes. Because they, there's this on their foot. Imagine having connected like fingers together so you can't do this. They have that helps them paddle through the water. And when they do that, because they spend more time in the water than the chickens do. Hi, all right, so we're in the worm farm today. We're down here uh, in what we call the cattle barn. And if you look down, we have this plastic sheet here. And underneath this is where we raise all of our worms. It's a certain type of worm called a red wiggler. And they're really great at creating compost. So let's show them, Charlie. You want to help pull this over? Look at that. So this is all ready to be harvested. This is vermicompost, and vermicompost is made by all of these little worms here. Maybe you can zoom in and see them. I don't know if you can see some of can them. Can you find one? Wyatt, can you find one? No, buddy. Can see that? Oh, there's a little one. It's there's, a little baby. And, and, and there's millions in here. And what they Are do is they break down the different food scraps, 
and break down different sources of carbon, like cardboard and different paper. And what this wood essentially chips. is, is after the worms go in and eat all of the different food scraps and eat all the different cardboard and wood chips, then what's left is this vermicompost. And this is actually worm poop. Yes, it is. But it is this ultra fine, very silky smooth, nitrogen rich fertilizer. And it's a really great top dressing because especially for organic gardeners that are first starting out, you're not going to be able to burn your plants or damage your plants with the uh, with vermicompost as opposed to a traditional fertilizer. So uh, one of the big benefits to organic gardening, you're not going to burn your plants. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the greenhouse and we're going to meet Haley and she's going to show you how we put and top dress all of our starts and vegetable starts with vermicompost. Come on. Hi, I'm Haley, and I'm the horticulturalist and term here at Tulip Tree Gardens. Uh, so we're in the greenhouse, and what we have started here in the front is our hemp starts. It's sour lifter strain. Uh, this started last week, so they're already popping up, which is a really nice start. Then farther back, we have some herbs and perennial flowers, peppers, and um, outside we have all of our tomatoes hardening off. Um, just because they already have their tree leaves and they're also fed outside. So we'll go around there and talk about uh, what I fed them with. Then we do some houseplant starts, specifically succulents. We dug up some chamomile as well from our garden uh, beds this last spring. So we're gonna go outside where I was hardening off our tomato plants. Um, this morning I fed them with vermicompost. So they've been sitting, airing out, and getting some nice sunshine. Kind of like a sun bath. So all I did was I sifted that vermicompost this morning after I had raked it over and refed it. I sifted about a bucket full and came through here with my hands and I carefully sprinkled um, the vermicompost over the tomato seedlings making sure that nothing was left on the leaves of the plants though especially out in the sunlight that was going to burn them so uh, i shook them off and so we're in the farrowing barn today and uh this is where we raise up our piglets this is where our piglets are born we have one of our pregnant sows right now mary down in the field and she's going to be coming in here this is going to be laid in with a whole bunch of straw and there's going to be a nice warm space for the piglets to be and this is freeform farrowing so we don't use any farrowing crates we don't do any confinement of any kind but uh, they do produce waste and obviously that will produce compost so every day we come in through here and we shovel this out we have some really great integrated drain systems in here that makes for a really clean sanitary environment for the pigs and uh, we'll take that compost and we'll produce that and that'll actually go on to our field. It's a little bit lower in nitrogen content so it's not the type of compost that you're necessarily going to put into your vegetables but it's a really great field dressing and great for pastures and things like that. Alright so we're down here uh, at the main paddock for the pigs and this is kind of where they hang out mostly during the day in the winter time. And we have Mary, and then we have Brownie, our boar to the right, he's the brown guy. And then Jane, she's the little one who just stood up. And uh, Mary's pregnant right now, and Mary's going to have some piglets for us in about a week, actually. So we're getting ready to move her into that farrowing barn that we showed you. And uh, this is a type of pig, it's called a black pole in China. It's a heritage hog, one of the oldest heritage breeds in the United States, um, originally raised in Ohio. Uh, they like to play in the water, but they, uh, they roll around in it and create a mess. Hey, so this is Mary. She's pregnant. She's about a week out, I think, from uh, having piglets. And uh, we're going to try to check her and see exactly if she is really, really close or if she's got a few more days yet, okay? One of the ways we're going to do that is we're going to find out if she's lactating yet. Because as soon as she starts to lactate, 
you know that she's in within two, three days, typically um, maybe a little bit more of when uh, she's gonna give birth, okay? So we're just gonna check underneath just like you would if you were a piglet and let's see this 600 pound sow throw me around. <laughs> okay, so now Jane gets nervous and Jane comes over, so I gotta be careful about her. And Jane wants to protect her sister. And they love each other and they love me. And I love them and she's not ready. She's got a few more days. our way out to the compost pile which is where our horse manure and our pig it is horse dung goes. Um, at different stages of breakdown obviously so you know this is the earliest stages this is where we uh, drop off early on then this gets rotated into a pile and then this pile starts to break down this is about a month and a half old over here maybe about two months old over here Okay, it's already starting to break down pretty good. And if you dig down in here, look at that steam just cooking. You could fry an egg in there. You could? Yeah, but you wouldn't need it because, you know, it's poop. So. You could fry it? Hot fry it? Yeah. How hot is it? So hot. I'm getting burned here. Ooh. All right, so that now let's go look so at some hot. more aged compost. Look at all. And this is from last year. Oh. This is the stuff that we're putting onto our gardens now. That was when I was five. I'm six now. And this is broken down, ready to go. <laughs> compost. We don't accept. Uh, we won't accept grass clippings that have been from lawns that have been treated or anything like that so we typically won't accept any grass clippings. Uh, in terms of wood chips, we'll only accept wood chips from uh, county contractors that have cut those trees from areas that have not been sprayed for mosquitoes and things like that. Also, uh, sometimes when we do get deliveries from people for manure and things, uh, a quick way to not be able to deliver anymore is to have junk in your manure. So one of, uh, one of our friendlies here accidentally had some cat cans and some garbage and stuff in their manure, so they have to come back and clean it up, and they won't be able to, uh, to drop off here anymore. So one of the things to make clear is that whenever you're doing your compost, please separate accordingly uh, because it really does affect the final farm that it's going to and it creates a mountain of work for us out here. So, and this is Acre, our Great Pyrenees dog. She's our livestock guardian dog. She loves humans, she loves kids, but she really loves her chickens and ducks. She lives outside year round. She loves the cold weather. And we'd love to see you here at the farm and you can meet Acre. Come on, Acre. <laughs>